Good morning, all of you that are watching Worksheet Cloud this morning. I hope that you have had a good night's rest and that you slept well and maybe even slept in a little bit for those of you that are still at home. Um, so today we are going to be doing quite an interesting lesson and yes, you do need a pencil or a pen and a page so that you can write some things down as we go along. Grade fours, as you know, if you have any questions regarding this lesson or any of my other lessons, please send an email to grade four at worksheetcloud.com and we will get back to you as soon as we can after this lesson. So let's see what we're going to be learning today. And we're going to be looking at Concord. And some of you are probably thinking, what in the world is Concord? Well, we're going to be particularly looking at the subject verb agreement in sentences. And this is such a common mistake, grade fours. So common that sometimes I even make it still. Yes, teachers make mistakes. And this is one of those common mistakes that we make when we are writing sentences, or when we are answering questions based on verbs and verb tenses. Okay, so we're going to be learning about this concord and how we can make sure that we don't make those kind of mistakes. Okay, so let's move on. Our lesson outline for today. We're going to build a poem. Okay, I know we are used to doing sentence a day, even spicing up our sentence, figuring it out. Okay, but today I thought we'd change it up a little bit and we'd look at building a poem together and I want to teach you how to be a bit creative when you are looking at any kind of picture and see if you can build a poem on a based on a picture. We're going to look at what is Concord. We're going to look at how to check for Concord in a sentence because like I said, we can always make these kind of mistakes. So how to identify concord in a sentence. And then we're going to look at the agreement between the verb and the tense or the subject and the verb in a sentence. And lastly, we're going to practice, okay? And then in the end of this lesson, we're going to be looking at the different kinds of sentences and how to choose the correct verb or the correct tense for the sentence. So let's move on to building a poem. Build a poem. That's our activity for the day. So yeah, over here we have a picture. Okay, and in this picture, as you can see, there's a river and it's running through this beautiful, beautiful garden. There are purple flowers all around, trees and lots of lots of greenery. So I want you to look at this picture and see how you would describe it. You can write down the words on your page in front of you. And I want you to do that now. So all the colors, all the descriptions that you can have for this picture, write them down now on your page. And let's see if we can build a poem together. Good luck, grade fours. So the first thing that's very important when you are busy making a building a poem is that you need to look at the descriptions. That means that poetry is a lot about creating something, creating an image. And in order for us to create an image, we need to describe what that image looks like. So you have learned over the course of these law of these lessons, you have learned about figures of speech, which we love to use in poetry. Figures of speech include alliteration, assonance, personification, a metaphor, um, simile, okay? These are all just a few types of figures of speech that we can use in a poem to make our poem a little bit more creative or imaginative. So in this picture, I wanted you to write down words because sentences always begin with words, obviously, and the words are chosen 
for a specific reason. Now, I have already built my poem, but my goal is to get you there to build yours. So we're going to start with one line first. So let's think of any line here, okay? Let's think of the flowers grow on the side, okay? So the flowers grow on the side. My last word is side. And if I decide, decide to use a rhyming word, I would have to put my word side on the screen and then try and remember every other word that could possibly rhyme with the word side, like lied, hide, okay? And then I write my next line. And so I carry on. But remember, it can't just be any words put together. It must be words that make sense and have to do with the picture. So with all of that said, grade fours, let's see what I came up with. Right, let's see. Purple flowers grew on the side. And I'm taking out my pen because I know that I'm going to want to identify my different figures of speech and how I did this, okay? Purple flowers grew on the side of the flowing river running by. Now, as you can see here, they might not be directly rhyming, but there's a bit of a beat there, okay? So, purple flowers grew on the side of the flowing river running by. Trees and grass so very green, brought beauty that was yet to be seen. So I'm describing the beauty of this picture. And again, I have my rhyming words over here. And I also have alliteration because here I got brought beauty. And if some of you look very closely, these words are quite close together as well. So I have grass and green, okay? Peace in the air, the world lies bare. As we enjoy this moment of serenity, a tranquil time for you and me. So air, bear, serenity, and me. So the poem is describing this picture. And as you can see in the picture, there's a calmness, there's tranquility, there's peace. And so my poem is using that tone that theme throughout the poem because I want the reader to understand the, how calm, how peaceful, how beautiful this place is. So I'm going to read my poem one more time and I really encourage you to please write your own one based on this picture. So, purple flowers grew on the side of the flowing river running by. Trees and grass are so very green brought beauty that was yet to be seen. Peace in the air, the world lies bare. As we enjoy this moment of serenity, a tranquil time for you and me. I hope you enjoyed that poem, Grade Fours, and I'm sure your ones will be wonderful as well. Let's move on. What is Concord? Concord indicates that the words in a sentence must match or agree with one another. If the tense does not is not consistent throughout the sentence, that means that the sentence does not match and therefore it is wrong. Okay? The same way the subject and the verb has to match each other in order for it to make sense. As we go on in this lesson, you're going to see what I mean when I say that it has to match one another. So, the subject and the verb must agree in number and person. The word number does not mean that there must be suddenly a number in the sentence. No, it means that we must decide about this, whether a noun or a subject is plural or singular. And that's going to tell, tell us whether it matches the verb. So this is very important, grade fours, because like I said right in the beginning of this, of this lesson, this is a common mistake that a lot of us make. So beware and take note as I go on. 
So, to decide whether the verb must be singular or plural, you have to find the subject. Now, the subject of a sentence is who or what the sentence is about. The girl jumped over the fence. The girl is who or what the sentence is about. And therefore, the girl will be the subject of the sentence. Decide whether it is singular or plural. This is what will decide how you will write your verb. And then match the verb to the subject. I have an example for you so that you can see. I eat. Okay, so I is a singular, is singular. Okay, so therefore I eat. You eat, but Jane eats. Okay, so the verb changes here when I now speak of a third person. So if I speak of myself in the first person, I eat. If I speak about someone in the second person, which would be you, you eat. And then Jane is the third person, but however, Jane eats. Okay, so this is just a small example of how the mistake can be made. Okay. The subject. The subject may consist of a group of words. Specifically, we can look at the collective noun, which refers to a group as a unit. Now, how does this become difficult, grade fours? Well, we have to decide when we are busy with the sentence whether the sentence, the subject, is in singular form or plural form. The collective noun makes things a little bit complicated because it's a group of things. However, a collective noun is also referring to something as one single unit. So therefore, it needs to be treated as singular, even though it's referring to a group of things. For example, the class of students was kept for deten in for detention. Now, the important part here is what? Was refers to singular, a singular subject. The class of students, even though it was a class of students, we're referring to the one part of this, which is the class. There were, weren't many classes of students. It was just one class. And the student is now referred to as it's a singular unit because it's a class of students. So this is how things can be confusing grade fours because even though it's referring to a group of people, it's only one class and therefore will be treated in a singular form. So what I did was I wanted to explain this to you. So if I take the class of out and I put the students were kept in for detention. Suddenly, the verb, which was was in the sentence, the verb was in the sentence over there, suddenly that can no longer be was because now we are looking at plural. And the students, that word is in plural. One student, many students. And therefore, my verb changes to were instead of was. So I'll repeat grade fours. The class of students refers to a singular unit, one class of students, and therefore our verb will be was. However, if we take the class of away and we say the students were kept in for detention, the students are now plural, which is many of, and therefore were is in place of was. I really hope that made sense. So, we are now going to, the only way to really get into um, Concord is if we practice, practice, practice. So, I'm going to put a few sentences up on the screen and we are going to practice together. 
to learn how we can identify concord and choose the correct verb in the subject verb, agree verb agreement. So, I hope you are ready. Grade fours, take your pencil and pen out, pencil or pen, and your page out so that we can get into this exciting activity. And there you have it, grade fours. Please look at these sentences. I'm going to give you a few seconds to write them down. I'm going to show you right on top of here. I have separated the words over here. So the banks is or are closed today. Okay, you need to look at the, whether the subject is in singular or plural form. And that's going to help you choose your verb. So I'm going to help you with doing the first one with you. Then I'm going to give you a few seconds to try them on your own. And then we'll complete the activity. So, ready or not, let me choose a different color for my pen. And we can get started. There we go. So, the banks is or are closed today. So, the reason I chose this sentence, Great Pause, is because I actually made this very, very serious mistake the other day. I said the banks is closed. That's not what I'm supposed to say. So, the banks is written in a plural form. Therefore, I cannot use the word is as part of my answer. The banks are closed today, not the banks is closed today. So when I circle my answer, I know that is is for singular, or is for plural. The banks are closed today. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do the rest on your own, and then we're going to do the answers. Good luck, Red Fours. If you need some extra time, you may pause the video at this stage so that you can finish the activity on your own and then learn what the answers are as I continue. So, my brother and I enjoy or enjoys going camping. My brother and I refers to plural, okay? My brother and I. So, therefore, I will not be using enjoys. I'll be using enjoy. If it was my brother alone, it would be my brother enjoys going camping. But since it's my brother and I, it's my brother and I enjoy going camping. Joe eat or eat all of his food? It is Joe eats all of his food. Right. I am or are going for a walk. I need to ask myself, what makes sense? I am going for a walk or I are going for a walk? I am going for a walk. Jane is or are? There I left the A over there out. So let me just put that there. Jane is or are happy about passing? Jane is happy about passing. Simone and Rachel is or are excited about the trip. I know now that is is used for singular and are is used for are is used for plural. And Simone and Rachel are two people, so therefore it is plural. The children is or are preparing for the annual trip. The children are preparing for the annual trip. The pride of lions are stalking their prey. The pride of lions is stalking their prey. Ah, difficult one. The pride of lions, pride, one pride. It is a collective noun and therefore is stalking their prey. I hope you got all your answers right, grade fours. Well done for those of you that did. And so we are going to now move on. Grade 4s, 
thank you so much for watching this lesson. I hope you understand Kong code now. And I also hope that you check your work, especially when you're busy with the subject verb agreements, that they make sense. You can send any questions you have about this lesson or any of my other lessons to grade 4 at worksheetcloud.com and we will get back to you after this lesson. An activity is provided for you. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this lesson, grade 4s, and don't forget to, to use your creativity, build that poem, write that story, and draw that picture. From me, Miss Nicole Frank. Bye.